First of all, I wanted to share with you real quick that uh, my gifting that God has put in the church falls under Ephesians chapter 4. And God gives five different offices to the church itself. He gives the prophet, the apostle, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So I want you to understand the way I come towards you and at you. And each time I preach, you're going to continually hear from me a constant vein. That vein is always going to be evangelism because God has built me for evangelism. Somebody say evangelism. You know what evangelism is. It's basically heralding the kingdom of God. Heralding the good news. Some people just have it at a different level. I understand. But here's what else God has done in me. He showed me years ago that the gifting in that office also incorporates me teaching the body of Christ to do as I do or in a similar manner and to see as I see. Okay? Your gifting would allow me to see something. What the Petersons spoke this morning, was a, that was a gifting that allows them to see the word of God in a certain way and allow them to bring it forth so that we have a truth that enlightens our heart. Can we say amen? That's why if you are a toe of the body, don't say the toe doesn't have a responsibility. Don't say I sound like or don't sound like or I don't have the education of. Get rid of that garbage out of your mind and let God do in you and through you what he wants to do. <laughs> you got that? It's simple. This life of Christianity, to me, we make it so complicated. Just make it simple and quit vying for position. Listen, if we humble ourselves and we'll embrace every word that comes out of your mouth to a point of first comparing it to the word of God and saying, I receive that in my spirit. Okay? So understand that I'm here to equip you, as Ephesians 4 says. If you're going to go play a football game, if you're going to be in a soccer game, you need equipment to properly perform that game. Am I correct? So I'm here to equip you in the office of evangelism. So what does that picture behind me represent? It represents about a month ago, God put upon my heart that we should just take a little hunting trip. And uh, Scott, Nehemiah, Scott, ne Nehemiah, so everybody see Nehemiah, Nehemiah's back there. Nehemiah is Scott and Tabitha's son, okay? Where's Paul? Paul's on the camera, and then Mr. Hunter is in the back here, who was on the guitar this morning. And God just placed upon my heart that we should just spend some time together. So Monday, we decided to go to Prescott, Washington. I hired out a pheasant hunt for us. And it's, it's, it, when you hire out a pheasant hunt, for those of you who don't understand... They place birds in a field, and you take your dogs, and your dogs kick up the birds, and you have an opportunity to shoot them. It is beyond our hunting season for wild birds right now, but you can go to a private farm and do this. So this is what we decided to do. So Monday morning, as we got up, we decided that we would meet at the Peterson's house at 6 a.m. And that was a decision that we made. And so what I'm going to do today is I want you to hear from me because how many of you believe that we've been getting some incredible teaching from Sonny? For those of you that don't know, Sonny and I have been together for 21 years. So if anybody can, I, can see the depth of what's coming out of that man, I can guarantee you it's me. And the depth of what's coming out of him right now is because he's on his face before God hours upon hours so that he can convey so he can equip us in the things in which God is speaking to him. So you're going to hear from me today some things in which he's been preaching that I'm going to expound on so that we can have a timeline to see how God functions. How many have been hearing this Sunday? We preached for four weeks. He talked about the chronos and the kairos. Chronos time is a time on the clock. It's 11.48 a.m. On the 25th of January 2024. That is the Kronos time. The Kairos time is the God appointed time. Many of you had a God appointed time in your life when you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can remember that date and time right now. Some of you may say, Well, I already I always knew the Lord. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to have a time date stamped. But you know that Christ Jesus is your Lord and Savior. So we as a group made a decision that on Monday that we were going to meet at the Kronos time of 6 a.m. So that's what we did. 
we sat outside the Peterson's home. It's chilly, and we're all excited, and I could see the excitement on all the young men's faces, and I've done this many times. I've done it since I was 27 years old, so therefore it wasn't new to me, but I was looking forward to one thing, and that was the communion of having men together. So as we went, <clears throat> we, we, we stood in the Peterson's driveway, and I said, well, we got to pray first. So we all gathered, and Paul's mom was there, Gina, and we're all standing out there, and we began to pray, and we began to we begin to speak to our day because we've been listening to Sonny talk about Job 20, but Job 38, verse 12. That scripture says, God is challenging Job, and he says, Job, have you commanded your day? Job, are you one that will speak into your day? Now, that's habitual for me. I do that every day. I expect God to use me in such a way I wake up in the morning, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak over my life that I will incline my ear to the throne room of God today. And Father, as I incline my ear to you, I'm going to hear your voice. And as I hear your voice, I'm going to hear the spirit of God. And you're going to use that spirit for me to bless anybody I come in contact with. That's my prayer. That's how I pray. But I know that a lot of people don't pray that way. We're being taught that we should command and expect our day. Over the years, you've heard me use the word many times, expect, expect, expect. What are you expecting God to do? Instead of asking God to come do it, what are you expecting him to do? So we commanded our day. We started to speak to our day and say, Lord, we're going to be used today. We don't know how, but we're expecting you to use us. So we get in the car and we start heading out. And I had told all the guys, I said, listen, I got, don't worry about anything. The Petersons decided they were going to feed us lunch. We were going to go to this pheasant farm and they were going to feed us hamburgers and he brought his camping gear and everything and but as the morning went on we were just going to stop by and get breakfast burritos in union gap so we're driving to union gap and along the way i'd been thinking about Krispy cream donuts all week okay and i thought you know what i got a bunch of young people with me um i know the petersons are are they're diligent enough they're not going to have a donut but i got paul with me who's 16 I got Hunter with me that's 23. I'm thinking, you know what? Somebody's going to share it with me and desire to go to Krispy Kremes with me. So we're heading to Union Gap, and uh, I, I said, hey, guys, anybody want a Krispy Kreme? And there's silence in the car. And pretty soon, one after the other, no, no, no. I'm thinking, what? So now I don't want to stop and get a Krispy Kreme because I got these guys in the car that said, well, I don't really need one. Okay, we head to Union Gap. We, we, we pull over into the perfect breakfast burritos in Union Gap, by the way. The one stop there, it's, you, you got to have those burritos. Okay, I get them all the time. And I walk in, and there's a gentleman. I think he's a Middle Eastern gentleman. And every time I go in there, you know, I, I do my best to, to just infuse the fragrance of God. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Good morning to you. I'm just off the charts. You know, people think I'm a little wild, crazy. But that's okay. Again, I'm peculiar. So we walk in, and I walk over to the burritos, and Hunter's beeline in behind me because he's, he's just as hungry as I am, even though he didn't want a donut. We walk over to the cabin, and I go, it's empty. And I went, oh, no. And the guy goes, the guy behind the counter does this to me. And Hunter looks at me, I look at him, I go, oh, are you kidding me? Now, we're on a schedule. My chrono schedule, I had told Gina, Paul's mother, I said, whatever you do, you better not be late because I'll leave him. When I'm going hunting, we are on a plan, we're on a schedule. So we, we, now we're running behind because now there's no burritos and I got to eat. Hunter's looking at me, we got to eat. So we just, I'm thinking, okay, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? But so in the meantime, while we're in Union Gap, the guy says to me, he goes, blame the president because it was President's Day. I go, what do you mean blame the president? He says, well, my boss decided not to, not to uh, have the gal come in who makes the burritos because he didn't think it would be busy today. He goes, I don't know what he was thinking. I'm going, man, what are we going to do? He goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, in the meantime, Paul was filling up his thermos. He's filling up his thermos with hot chocolate or whatever he was putting inside of it. And I went to pay for it. I go, yeah, he's getting a thermos full of coffee. I need to pay for it. And she turns to the guy, and pretty soon there's some conversation. And he turns to me. He says, no, 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 we're good. I said, you're not going to make me pay for it? No, no, we're good. We're good. Because there's no burritos. We're good. <laughs> so we get in the car, 
And we head up the road, and we finally find some burritos. We had to go three different stops before we found our burrito. Now we're 22 minutes behind. 22 minutes. So we get our burritos. But in the meantime, as we're traveling, I said to the guys, I go, you guys, know, I want you to know what happened. Because the Petersons were in the car, and Paul was over getting his coffee. I said, I want you to understand something. Do you realize that we already said this morning, by commanding our day, that we were going to be a blessing? We walk into this mini mart and i gotta believe that the atmosphere changed when we came in why because hunter didn't walk in jesus christ walked in hunter how tall are you hunter is six two jesus showed up six two white guy with a mustache and beard but that's the truth you got to understand you say well don't i don't feel worthy to be called jesus is not christ in you is the hope of glory inside of you. Well, then when he walked in, you know who we should represent? Jesus Christ. So I started breaking down. I said, you got to understand what just took place here because, you know, if we had walked in there and we had gotten angry because there was no burritos, which is most of the world what would do, right? Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if we had walked in in the carnal and started thinking the only thing to do was to satisfy our bellies, and because we couldn't satisfy our bellies, we got angry, and we started blankety blanking the person behind the counter, which is probably what they're used to doing, they saw the fragrance of God in us and said, hey guys, God bless you anyhow, sorry you don't have any burritos, but we'll go find one. He says, here you go, here's free coffee. You see how you can change an atmosphere? So we start talking about this along the way, okay? So we head through the gap, and we're headed to Prescott, and we got to go down towards Tri-Cities. Well, the number one place to have a potty break, in my opinion, is Prosser, because you can pull off the road, it's close by, you can get back on the freeway really quick. Am I right? Along the way, I had asked everybody in the car, I said, starting with you, Paul, I said, what's your expectation for today? And Paul started to speak about what, I don't remember every detail, but he, he started speaking about the, uh, how, how God was going to use us and, and how he was expecting us to be a blessing to somebody else. Nehemiah started to speak, and he spoke much of the same in the very same way that even Hunter did. So we all went in the car individually along the way. Now, mind you, we're excited to do what? To go bird hunting. But it's not just about bird hunting. It's not just about the activity. It is about what God is going to do on the way to the activity. So they all share. We pass Prosser. We're so deep in conversation about God, we pass Prosser. I didn't ask anybody if they had to go to the bathroom. So we get to Benton City, and I go, wait a minute. Does anybody have to go to the bathroom? Hunter goes, I got to go. Scott Peterson says, well, then, hey, let's pull into West Richland. Let's go to West Richland, and as we go into West Richland, there's a Walmart. So praise God, we pull into West Richland, there's a Walmart, but guess what's off to the right? Krispy Kreme. I said, hey, you think they have a bathroom in Krispy Kreme we can all use? Scott says they got to. I took a right, not a left. We went to Krispy Kreme. We walk in. I'm beelining. I get up to the counter. I said, do you have any of those blueberry fritters? Oh, no, they're out of season. We're not doing those anymore. I go, well, give me an apple fritter. So he, she gives me an apple fritter. I pay for the apple fritter. And one of the guys is in the bathroom. And uh, I grab my apple fritter. And we start, I just start blessing the gal at the edge of the counter, you know, who's helping us. And then um, I start walking towards the front door. I take a bite of my apple fritter. And my apple fritter has no satisfaction to my taste buds. None. And my wife will tell you, if something doesn't satisfy my taste buds, I won't eat it. Empty calories for me, don't eat it. I literally walked over to the garbage and dumped it in the garbage. No sooner than we dump it in the garbage, I think it was Nehemiah who came out of the bathroom, and I'm watching the mechanical aspect of how they're cooking the donuts and how it folds it and goes into the grease. And I'm fascinated. I'm looking in the window. I'm saying, this is amazing, the science behind cooking these donuts. And we're all talking about it, and all of a sudden, we hear somebody behind us who came through the front door. And this guy, he comes walking up, and he says, hey, what's going on here? Are we having a meeting? And we all turn around, and there's this 
man who walked in and he sees us, he sees us all standing at the front door and he starts to engage in conversation with us. And this is where it gets fun because this is now the Kairos moment, Jesus. See, we've been on Kronos time since 6 a.m. But God held us up at the first mini mart. God held us up at the second mini mart. We didn't find our burritos until the third mini mart. And we weren't supposed to be at Krispy Kreme in Yakima. We were supposed to be at Krispy Kreme in West Richland. This gentleman, his name is Edgar. He walks in and he says, hey, we having a meeting here? You guys waiting for me? See, if you're not living in the spirit, you'll miss that moment. Because you'll think, hey, everybody's done using the restroom. Now it's time to get to the hunt so that we can have our activity for the day. He starts talking and he just starts rambling on and on. And we, we've discussed it a little bit and said, what, you know, what even brought that on? Let me tell you what brought it on. He walked into the presence of Jesus. But Jesus was a 5'8 black man, 58 years old. And he was, he looked like every one of us standing there. He just didn't know it. What he did is he walked into the presence, into the fragrance of Jesus. And what he got captivated by was Christ's presence. He didn't get captivated by me. He didn't get captivated by Paul. He got captivated by Christ. So he steps in and he starts talking. He just starts lingering. And I said to him, I go, what do you do for a living? He says, man, I'm a trucker. I used to be working in the fields. I don't do that anymore. I make $2,500 a week. I go, $25 a week. I'm engaging. And now I'm watching everybody with me. Now hear me, people, when I say this. I've been with numerous people where God is working in a Kairos moment. And somebody breaks rank with me and decides to act a fool or to say, hey, it's time to go. But not one of the men I was with on Monday broke rank in that moment. Everybody stood. Everybody stood and let God move. They began to let the presence of God work. And it was he was working just by listening. Nobody was talking. We were just simple questions. What do you do for a living? And then he begins to talk about some friends of his who had passed away. Now, we can't even figure out how we got to this portion of the conversation. But he starts talking about two of his friends who died over the last year. And then he talked about being on the road in California as a trucker and how crazy people are. And he saw four people cross the center line and they died in front of him. And I said, my friend, oh my goodness. I said, praise God that wasn't you. But what about your friends? He says, well, they all go to the same place. And when he said that, boy, I'll tell you what God, God said. Hold on to that one. I said, my friend, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, you indicated that your friends who passed away recently, that they all go to the same place. What do you mean by that? Okay. Can I have your Bible? Hand me your Bible. See, I, I didn't go up to Edgar and say, Edgar, that's wrong. That's wrong theology, Edgar. Edgar, open up the word to this scripture. No, I asked him what he thought. And he began to convey, well, don't everybody go to the same place? And without us saying a word, he goes, well, don't some go up and some go down? Hopefully I get to go up. Flip to the next screen, brother. I said, Nehemiah, do me a favor. I said, run out to the truck and get that vision card. See, many of you walk out this door here and you see that vision card and you go, I don't even know what to do with that. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Well, let me tell you about this. This card here was, driven, was written by my niece at the age of 19 when she had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. God spoke this vision to me over 20 some odd years ago. I cannot even play Pictionary. That's how bad of a drawer I am. But I thought so much that God was going to put this vision in me and have me draw it. That I was going to be given the ability to do it. But God said, no, I want you to take it to your niece. Well, my niece is sick. She's on her deathbed. The Lord said, the Lord said take it to her. She drew this. For 20 years, I've been handing this card out. 
20 years, if you ever go to a gas station and you see that it's up in the little advertisement card, you know I've been there. So I said to my friend, can, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, Edgar, what, what do you see in that? He says, oh, man, I see good, I see bad. He goes, what's this road on the right? I begin to convey to him, I said, my friend, these are people who have a purpose and a plan in life. These individuals have made a decision for Jesus Christ. They, have, they know exactly where they're going because they've made Jesus Christ as their Lord. I said, but the people on the left, I said, these are people aimlessly walking through life who've never made a decision for Jesus. And if you look at the end of the road, they're cascading into the lake of fire. I said, Edgar, the reason we're here today is because God has a plan for you that you're not one of these people. I said, Edgar, can you flip that card over? And I began to speak these scriptures to him. Edgar, that if you confess. I said, Edgar, do you believe that Jesus Christ died, rose came, died, and rose again from the grave. He said, yes, I do. I said, that's the prerequisite it takes to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I said, my dear friend, do you want to receive Jesus? Before I even finish, yes. I'm not kidding you. Before I even finish my statement, he says, yes. I said, guys, come here. And here's where the blessing is for me too, people. That I was with a group of men who didn't linger. They didn't sit back in the corners and go, Oh, are you asking me? I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to lay hands on this man. Oh, no. No, they gravitated to him in an instant. Because the day was not about bird hunting. Edgar gave his life to Jesus Christ with jubilance. Am I right, guys? It was amazing, wasn't it? So we walk out infused because God has now used us. Because God has answered the prayer to command the day. Lord, we want to be used. Lord, our hands are raised up high. We want to be used by you, God. If you want to be used, just ask. Say, Lord, remove the scales. Father, if there's any scales in, on my eyes and in my life, then Father, in Jesus' name, remove them. So now. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9. I want to show you fundamentally in the word of God a parallel of what took place in the life of Edgar. What took place in the life of five men who left with a chronos time period. But the kairos of God took over. Amen? In Acts chapter 9. This is the story of our friend Saul. Saul, who was renamed Paul, for those of you that will not be confused, this is his pre-conversion. And Saul is a man breathing murderous threats to the people of God. He's coming to a place where he is jailing people. He is, he is beating people to a point where he wants them to renounce the Jesus in whom they serve. And I want to pick this scripture up in verse 6. And it says, so he being Saul, trembling and astonished. Now let me back up just a hair. Saul at this point has had an encounter with God. He's coming down to the road of Damascus. And God shines a light on him and blinds him to a point where he no longer can see. He has an encounter with God. Edgar on Monday, had an encounter with God. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, do you remember that encounter you had with God? One of the greatest challenges with people that call themselves Christians, you ask them if they ever had an encounter and they go, what? Don't know what you're talking about. If you didn't have an encounter with Jesus, what did you receive? Verse 6. So Saul, trembling and astonished, he said, Lord! What do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you'll be told what to do. Edgar said to us in that conversation, he said, you know what? I made some changes in my life because of these people in my life that have passed away. Guys, I don't know if you remember this, but he said, I stopped drinking Red Bull. He said, I've changed my diet. You know why? Because death causes you to try to do things different. When, when you have the reality that you're close to death, 
you start to change and do things a little bit different. So Saul in this moment is astonished and trembling. Edgar came into Krispy Kreme with previous astonishment of his friends who passed away to a point he was trembling and saying, I got to do something different in my life. I got to make some changes in my life. Because God was speaking to him even though he didn't know what he was really listening to. Hold on. I'll connect the dots. He says, arise and go into the city. Somehow, some way, on Monday, God spoke to Edgar and said, you want a Krispy Kreme? You didn't know church could happen at Krispy Kreme, did you? But how does God take five men leaving Yakima at 6 a.m. and connect him in a Kairos moment together in West Richland at the exact appointed time? That's only God. Do not ever give credit to a coincidence. His name is Jesus. So the Lord says, don't you feel like a Krispy Kreme today, Edgar? Verse 7. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing nothing. Verse 8. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he did what? He saw no one. Saul stands up. He opens his eyes after having this light shine upon him, and he sees nothing. Church, do you know what my gifting is for you? That when you're walking around in this community, that you open up your spiritual eyes and begin to see what God has for you. To see the open doors. To see that you, in your workplace, have an opportunity that you've never taken advantage of. We no longer can walk around with eyes open, being blinded. The reason you have a church here that is different, probably, than anything you've ever been to before. Because we will only, we will not settle for the status quo. We will only go after the depths of the maturity of the word of God to get you equipped to go out and win your county for Christ. Every one of us have the ability to be an influence every single day of our lives. The question lies is, are you missing the Kairos moments? They led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without his sight. He neither ate or drank. You know what I wonder about, church? See, I'm talking to you about Edgar, but there are four employees. And if you've ever been to a Krispy Kreme, that window I was standing next to watching all the donuts, those four employees were on the other side of that. And they see five men meet a stranger and five men laying hands on this man in the entry of Krispy Kreme. So even though I'm talking to you about what I know in Edgar, what's going on in those other employees? Are they having Kairos moments also? We got to expand our thinking, people. We got to get out of our carnal thinking. And I'm going to say this to you again. I'll say it all, uh, continually. The one thing that's going to drive you to this Kairos moment is your love for people. If you don't love people, you'll never step into this. You'll never walk in this. And I'm going to say a very strong statement, not meant to offend you, but I can identify the people in your life you don't love because you won't talk to them about Christ. Just saying. We'll get past that uncomfortable moment. Verse 10. Now I'm going to show you how God used us. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord spoke to Brian Jones and said, I want you to take a trip on President's Day 2024. You are a certain disciple, Brian. And I said, here I am, Lord. He says, I want you to take some men with you because I have an assignment for you. Verse 11. So the Lord said to him, arise and go. I want you to go to a street called Straight. And I want you to inquire of the house of Judas, where there's one named Saul of Tarshish. For behold, he is praying. I wonder what Edgar was doing in his life up to this point. When his two buddies had passed away. And he's saying, I don't know how to find you, God. But I am praying, saying, God, I don't want that to be me. And he says, I'm taking five men from Yakima who have said yes to the calling, who actually gathered together, commanded their day and said, I'm going to be used today of you. And I took them and moved them to Krispy Kreme in West Richland, which is no different than Ananias going to Straight Street looking for Saul. Are you receiving this? Rise and go. Good Lord, church, rise and go. 
Arise and go to your home. Arise and go to your work. Arise and go to the coffee shop. Arise and go. Because there's a man who's been praying, looking for Jesus, but he doesn't know how to get him. He doesn't know how to find him. But you do. You do. Verse 12. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming and putting his hands on him. That he might what? Jesus. Edgar doesn't know why he's going to Krispy Kreme. But guys, I don't know if you know this. I didn't tell you this. When I walked outside, Edgar's truck was running. Edgar was going to make a quick stop. And then the Lord says, Ryan, why would he leave his truck running when he had a drive through to go through? If he was in that big of a rush, why didn't he go through the drive through And here's what Ananias says, verse 13. He says, Lord, I've heard from many people about this man, how much harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. What is Ananias going through? Fear. Well, Lord, this man, what if he binds me? What if he takes me and jails me? What if he beheads me? Lord, I can't go talk to that person. That person is tattered up from top to bottom. I'm afraid of that individual. Lord, what? If, I can't do that, God. No, I'm going to go the other direction. We deal with the same type of fear. Lord, I can't talk at my work because what if my bosses? What if they write me up? What if they fire me? Church that goes. Why do we do evangelistic events? Why are we leading the charge with Breakthrough Church July 19th through the 21st? We're doing everything God has put in our hearts to go. Church, I'm here to tell you, if you go to Simply Jesus Church, you're under scrutinism. People are scrutinizing you. You know why? Because you're radical. You may not hear, but you will soon. You'll begin to hear the murmuring of what you are or what you aren't and what they do at that Simply Jesus. See, you, 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 you am I right? You've heard it, haven't you? Okay? If you haven't heard it, brace yourself. It's coming. It's coming. But don't worry about it. It all depends the fortitude that you have to stand on what God has called you to do. If he's called you to be planted at Simply Jesus, plant yourself here and get the job done. Let's go. I've chosen him to bear my name. Where? Before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. You say, well, is Edgar really going to be before kings? Here's what I can tell you. He's been sent to his son, his children, and his children come to know Christ now. He raises them up in the admonition of God. And he starts to testify the word of God to them to a point where his son doesn't make a poor decision as to the woman he marries. And they marry together, unified in Christ Jesus, so that the offspring of Edgar, are you following me? It's not just Edgar. It's not just Edgar. Verse 17, and Ananias went. Woo. And simply Jesus went in spite of the fear. Simply Jesus went in spite of the ridicule. Simply Jesus shut their ears off to all the opinions and did what God said do. He entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me. Edgar, you don't know why you ended up here, but we prayed. We told him that, did we not, guys? We said, Edgar, we prayed before we left. In fact, we prayed for him once when he came to know Christ. And then Scott said, can I pray for you again before you go? Because the Lord had laid upon Scott's heart to do what? He said, I need to pray for your protection while you're in that truck. He got prayed for twice. Edgar, God has sent us. Church, you need to tell people why you're there. You need to tell people why you're speaking the things of God that you're speaking to them. You need to tell them this is a Kairos moment. So one other thing I want you to see as we leave here today, that simultaneously... God was speaking to two different groups of people. And he brought those two different groups together at a Kairos moment. Do I hear an amen? amen. Stand.